Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I mean, six, I mean, five. See that building? Well, see that building, right? That's supposed to be the interior of building four. I'm going to come over to the comments right away tonight. But I just want to start the video off with people who don't know any better that that's what they're claiming now on BBC, Fox News, CTV, CBC, ABC, CNN, MSNBC, etc., etc., etc. Now, the Asian countries are not saying that. But... Um, I don't think anyway that I haven't seen very much of. But the American and the Canadian countries are claiming that what you're looking at there is the inside of that. And um, look at that and imagine that. Does that make any sense to you? Now, you see up in the top corner, that's the only indication there's something wrong with that building Right? That, with that building there. See? Do you got any idea how crazy it is for them to say that um, that thing there, and in particular that that is somehow equivalent to that? I got no concept of what their PR firm is doing, but I can assure you that in the future they're going to be swinging. How can they not be? I mean, that's an outrageous. That's murder. Folks, that's what that is. That's murder. For a PR firm to come out and claim, and in and mainstream media, to come out and try to tell you that that thing there is that. How is that even possible? How did you get from there, from here? When it's full of rods, that'll kill you. It's full of rods, that'll kill you. See? It'll kill you. Before you got close to it. Because it's, it's... But it looks up, it's 122,000 rods in each of those pools. And each rod is capable of killing every animal and human on the planet. And there'll be lots left over. So how, you know, so frustrating to see them try to say that that is actually the interior of that. It's ludicrous. And so now we got them in a lie. And so below me is another big lie. You see, that's the Canadian government went out made this presentation, it's below in my links, a 17 page presentation of how many death plumes from samples taken at 750 feet by an airplane flying the entire coastline of Canada, every 15 minutes taking samples that are off the charts. Go down and look at it yourself. It's all down below in the link to the actual PDF file. So if you've got a slow computer, be careful. But uh, they didn't tell people they were walking to school that day. They didn't tell the business people they were headed to work that day and were unloading trucks outdoors all day. They didn't tell the hospitals who were letting their patients outdoors for a walk that day. They didn't tell all those children in recess, dinner time, on the way home after school that day or the day after or for the next thousand days, well, 990 days. See, so there's another link below that I just put there. It's called um, Canada Busted Covering Up Spikes in Fukushima Radiations um, from the Washington blog that came out yesterday. Talking about exactly what you're looking at right now. And down below that one is the other link to the actual uh, study from the Canadian government. 
and five days after that, they pulled all the radiation detectors off the coastline. Unbelievable. Unbelievable! Our own government. Enough to make me want to cry. It really is. It's heartbreaking to me. And so they've been moving their families out of here. That's what they've been up to. Stealing all kinds of stuff now from the government itself, from us, the taxpayers, so they can set up shops somewhere else. And it all goes to shit. That's what they're up to since that. They're all up to thieving now, even worse than before. And they're murdering everybody in British Columbia, Canada. They murdered everybody. They gave everybody in Canada cancer in Western Canada. For sure. There's the proof right there in front of your eyes. See, right, that's not, that's our government just done that, we found out, done that to us. It's a black eye for everybody in Canada. Right in the very top, right there where my hand is toe, that top colors, you can see, um, you can see down at the bottom, I don't get it the ones, you see that angle, that's the back of Vancouver, outside of Vancouver Island. And at the very bottom of it, uh, yeah, I'll get it. So down there in the bottom anyway, um, that's roughly where I'm to. And so all that stuff came right over my head. At 750 feet, it was like a snowstorm all day, every day for 990 days after. Well, uh, that was on the 20th. On the 19th and 20th, they went up and took these samples for 18 hours of the coastline with sophisticated airplanes that should be on a nuclear waste site right now because they were flying through these death plumes that came down from the dead streams aka jet streams but we have renamed it on this site here and I come over to the comments we have renamed it on this site as the death streams appropriately it's not funny I know I'll let Zoe finish water and I'll come over to the control room on that one because that way I can play around with the pictures Okay, Zoe, you can go settle, please. You can do it. She's like, you're talking to me, Dana. Okay, settle down. Settle down. It's cold out tonight. Hi, Miss Milky. Um, what's going on in the comments section? Hi, new bro. New bro's like an hour and something minutes. First comment. This I got to give people at least that much warning. No way to get their sunglasses out. Corvert is uh, James Corvert is. I don't know what's going on. You know, if you live in that country, if you live in that country, you got to worry about the Kusu itself. you got to worry about your jobs and just getting around that country. I mean, that's a hot... Now, he's a long way away, but they did get high radiation down there. He's like 500, 700 miles away. Hi, Dwayne Campbell, Annabeck, Newman, Third Watch. Third watch, got two accounts. What's going on there? The Dominate, uh, Aviator, Miss Milky. Hey, Miss Milky. Third watch, two. Irene and Earl. And your comment never showed up here that you were, I responded to you earlier about. I checked some balances. I say hi to a few people. Carol B. Kerry B. Carol B. I'll get it. I'll probably get Irene Earl at the same time. Zipfri Ah, there, there. You have time for a fast shower. Alex Smith. See, most of the comments are missing. That's okay. 
Let me see what I could say here. Besides the fact that our government has stabbed us to death, literally and figuratively, by not telling us and knowing about it and producing it, and then that just shows up a few days back. They had it the whole time they sat on it, never told anybody anything. That's murder. It's okay, though. Go ahead and release some more. I won't call you murderers quite as much. I'll be saying, thank goodness you finally came around. Yep. Uh, I, I can't help but call people murder at this stage. Because for a thousand days, these death plumes have pounded us. Now the ocean is rotten. It's friggin' rotten. It's dead. Two years' time, it's going to be hell on earth because of the supercell storms that are coming. I'm just letting... Hi, your prop. Hi, Ketzer K. It takes a while for my comment section to get going every time when I first land. Hi, Robert. Yeah, the Canadian government turned off the detectors, they said, because the readings were too low. And uh, BC Liberal sent me that link that's below about that. By the way, I was trying to remember who sent that to me. From the Washington blog. That's a great one. There you go, BC Liberal. Right there. Say no more. Um, and that's a, such a great link, because that's what they're talking about, is that graph you see there. And that story came out yesterday, and the link is below. First link, I think it is below. And that, you know, I'm so tired of the government and all the mainstream media carrying these fake pictures. It's unbelievable that they can't flush that out themselves, that they don't even try, that they don't even question, that they don't even, they just come out like, it's a corporation, so we got to say whatever they said. Um, you know, you can't have any pity for what's going to happen to them in the near future when people find out. You can't have any pity for these people. These people are going to get torn apart in the streets. And they're just the useful idiots to the teleprompter readers, the dummies in the media. They're going to get murdered out there in the future. There's no doubt about it. People are snapping now. I've seen people snapping now. I'm just, they're so upset. They're just like freaking. They just want to tear somebody apart. Can't blame them. The realization when you come to it and, you're, and you realize that they're showing you a building, building four. I mean, that's incre incredible that they're showing you that and claiming that it's inside of that. Right? Here, have a look at that. See that? Take a good look at it. Hurry up. And that is supposed to be inside of that. My goodness. It doesn't look like that. See? Inside of that. Look at how perfect that is. It's a spick. It's span. It's shiny. That's the RT uh, screen capture from their, their report. But they all went in at the same time, right? BBC and CNN and all the other gob knob gobblers in the media and teleprompt readers. And you see that arrow pointed up there? That's the only thing that even resembles damage. It's pretty funny because everybody in that video, they all look up at the one time, right? They all look up at that corner and then the camera pans up there. And it's, it's a very subtle thing, right? And then it pans away again. And I thought, how, how, how funny is it, really, when you look at the ceiling and you consider how much carnage truly went on in that place? Right, look at it. There's not a panel intact. That's building four, see? That's building four, and they're saying it looks like that. They're saying that building four looks like that on the inside. And yet you got all these pictures of it looking like that. It looks like that, see? Does not look like that. That's probably five or six, maybe. But it's not it's not inside of that building, right? No way. I mean look. That's inside of the building. You can see inside of it. It's full of rods. And a piece that big will kill everybody in this room before it can finish the sentence. Every single this house was packed, it would kill everybody in the in the room. Instantly. It's so toxic. And Molly Maid went in there and spit shine all of that fucking shit up in there. And the media is not going to call somebody. I'm starting to yell. That is not. 
Like, any idiot out there would work that out the minute they took a look. So why didn't the media? Now, not one of the media has questioned that. I knew we're magic. How's it going, bud? Third watch, covering their butts. No. Like, that's enough. That's enough it is. That's enough. I can't take it anymore. It's got me tortured. It's fake. It's a fake. They faked it. Everything's fake and the media went along with it. Our governments, our governments produced studies nine days later showed we were being hammered with big snowstorms of radioactive material. And that's only cesium 137. They weren't looking at the, the plutonium. They weren't looking at the strontium. They weren't looking at the uranium. And so that means the entire coastline now, for sure, 100% already, is history. It's uninhabitable. It's got so much on our coastline from these snowstorms, these death plumes from the death streams, for a thousand days. And they finally come out and say, oh, by the way, you know, we went out there and then five days later we turned the detectors off. As if everybody else on the coast the Pacific Rim got the same issues. Everybody. And what does the media th not think this is going to murder their children too? It's not going to kill their loved ones, their parents, their husbands, their wives? Their, you know, does people really think that's what not, that's not going to happen to them? They just tell this lie? They're supposed to represent us? Humanity's last stand? And what? We're supposed to forgive them? Oh, you know, it's just the media. Uh-uh. Not me. Not me. I'm not going to forgive or forget. Ever. This betrayal. To humanity itself. To their own humanity. How could they not turn into a whistleblower knowing everybody was being inundated? Just weaponized isotopes that have nothing to do with making power. That'll never go away. And then everybody ends up having to liquidate their assets trying to save each other from all the misery through the fables of the treatments instead of cures. And so what are we going to do about this? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to push back? Lord knows I tries. I don't give it up. I don't stop. And I'm at the point now that I feel like I'm just beginning. Like I'm just winding up. And I don't care anymore. I just don't care anymore. I don't got no respect for media no more. I ain't got no respect for my government no more. They're murdering me every single day now. They're not even trying. They turned off the detectors. They turned them off. They turned them off while your children were going to school. And they turned them off while you were going out the door. They turned them off. And they never told anybody on their own. They knew. They knew. That's why they turned those radiation detectors off here in British Columbia, Canada. And the Americans done the same thing. Japan is imprisoned. They got a secrecy law up today. Nubra Magic's covered it a couple of times in a row. I'm just so upset. What are we going to do, folks? There's nothing can protect anybody, see? Only common sense and the entire 4,200 peer review academic studies that are published every day that are locked away at Elsefer, Springer, and Wiley are now turn our attention to this killer meteorite that has struck us and we have to deal with it we just have the only thing we got to do first is admit it and media keeps blowing every opportunity media should have said to tepco well that's not the one you must give us the wrong tape give us the right tape and we'll run your story simple as that the only integrity in media left on the planet is in uh, Hollywood movies. That's it. That's the only. <laughs> that's a far cry from integrity too. 
What's the only only spot you'll ever hear is somebody say, I'm a journalist, I'm going to run the story anyway. It's the only way you're going to hear that fable. Nobody out there can run a story. The editors uh, will cannibalize it and... You know, the upper management will kill it at the, any stroke of a pen any time you feel like it. Whereas not me. There's no one controls me. Uh, unfortunately, unless I got all kinds of millions of dollars of lights and stupid looking dummies in suits and dresses, painted whores, reading from teleprompters, nobody wants to hear about it. They just want to hear the same regurgitated shit on every station. So their brains don't go, uh, what was that? That's not what they said in Fox News. You give people strokes if you change the story between Fox and CNN and all that. They all got the same, same questions. Strontium 90 released into the Pacific begins around a thousand days. Ron? How many, uh, there was 2.3 trillion Beckwolves per second of plutonium in the first four days went into the ear, right? Strontium-90, I couldn't give a fuck about Strontium-90. You can fuck right off for all I care. Strontium-90 don't mean jack shit. There's uranium. Uranium. Woo-hoo. That whole site was full of 238. Not to mention 234, 235, which is a whole different monster once you process it. I'm not yelling at you. But when you process that stuff, it's a different type of x-ray. It's a different type of neutrons. It's a different type of gammas and betas and alphas on a whole new level. The MOX fuel, which they keep trying to downplay and marginalize and minimize, yeah, Lindsey Graham, the creature from hell itself, is the guy who kept Mox alive for all these years, you know. Go figure, Lindsey Graham. The man who's behind just about every evil that comes out of the United States. I'll find that. Hang on. Let me open that up. That really pissed me off. New doubts about turning point in plutonium. Are you too, little Lindsay? You little creature. Let me give you the headline anyway before we move on. I got so much today, it's, not, it's inconceivable. So Reactor 4 had one explosion and two fires in March 2011. Right? This building had one explosion you can see that. See? Explosion. That building had one explosion, two fires, and a major fires from zirconium melting off the rods. The rods are coated in the zirconium, and that releases what's known as noble gases. And you call them noble gases because you don't treat them with respect. respect. They'll knock you a couple of miles away. And you'll be so radiated to have to bring your body back. I ain't going to any graveyard unless the Yakuza gave you 15 bucks an hour. Um, so, Shaw, S H A W, Areva, A R E V A, Mock Services, is uh, Lindsey Graham's best friend. They're the Mox fuel producers on this planet. Two million times. Unit 3 was two million times. Because of the MOX and the uranium and then the 1300 weaponized isotopes. Because that's not a power plant. You don't use hideous stuff like this to make power. There's no need of it. have been making power 40, 50 years ago. With just a run of the mill isotopes, you don't need anything fancy. And that's not fancy. That's weaponized military industrial hell on earth. That's released. That's hell on earth. That's 2 million uh, times a regular reactor. And Chernobyl was 30% meltdown. And Chernobyl was one-third the size of Fukushima. And Fukushima had all these pools on the roof of it. And each pool had around 122,000 rods in it. And there's typically three pools, say. So that's 360,000 rods 
on the top of each building. Right? See how they cannibalize the numbers? I've seen the media to reporting a couple of weeks back, I got it there somewhere, that there was only 30,000 rods on the site. And people say, that's oh, lost in translation. Uh, the U.S. Department of Energy, right? And so Lindsey Graham gets these friggin' creatures, all their fundings. That and... What's that other creature's name? There's Jane Hartman. There's... Um, that other that really spooky fucking thing they got there. That old hideous creature with the head on it. Her husband just made a uh, $100 million on one of the deals with the government. The hell is her name? Um... Feinstein, Feinstein, and then last but not least, uh, John Kerry, and his dad was in charge of the cover-up of the USS Liberty, and the USS Liberty is where Israel attacked it for two hours, and at the same time, the Sixth Fleet had launched two birds with nuclear weapons on it towards the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt, and they were going to blame blame the sinking of USS Liberty. This is important, by the way. Because this all connects back to the people that are making the mocks feel on top of that. And so they ran a false flag, right? And so the media just ran a false flag on you, where they showed you this thing here, and it says that's building four. And that's what it looks like, though. See? Today, it looked like that in 100 years. It won't change. You won't see people here with scaffolds and welding torches and all that other shit. You just won't because people will die the minute they get close to it. But then they show you that and claim that it's inside of that. See, that's a false flag. That's what they're running on you, false flag. I'm blaming on the Japanese. And that building is wrecked. It's wrecked. That's wrecked. Sorry, folks. I'm just yelling at myself there. And the media wants you to think it looks like that because they they... They're just idiots. They, like I say, they just read a teleprompt. They don't. They they probably don't even look after either. They're too busy snorting coke off uh, underage prostitutes. Hi, the guy. Yeah, I dove the entire. Hi, the guy. Used to be called the Queen Charlotte's. It's full of hot springs. I ran a lot of uh, boats up there. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's what I said. It was McCain's dad who done the cover up. He was in charge of the cover up of the USS Liberties. And uh, at the same time, Israel had murdered. Um, it was a war crime too. It never got reported on very much. Ray McGovernor reported on it. Um, they had killed twelve hundred. They had captured twelve hundred uh, Egyptian prisoners in the Sinai Peninsula. And made them dig their own graves and jump down and machine gun them. And then made the pris more prisoners bury them, jump down and machine gun them. And kill 1,200 uh, Egyptian prisoners. And I guess one of those nuclear weapons that was on its way to the, was on its way to the side now, I'd uh, turn it into a sheet of glass. And nobody could ever find out what Israel had done. And uh, that was in 67. Because the USS Liberty, but that's a long story, I'm not going to go down. Uh, but that was, a, that was a false flag, see? It's a well-known false flag. And the media showing that to you and trying to pawn it off as the interior of that is, um, that's, a, that's a false flag they're running on you. Hi, 69, sir, what's I say? See? Got no idea how to say your name. Hi, hey, aviator, Anna Beck. I'm finally catching this live. Good stuff. That's only because I'm late tonight. Had a long day, rough day. I just barely got the show as it was. It was unreal. It's been a rough day. Smoke break. Uber magic on smoke break. Can't do two things at one time, or? I can do three things one time. Watch this. I can talk and rub my head and belly. I'm just being stupid at this stage. Oh, it should get better now. Everyone rubbing and pleasuring their thyroid glands, checking for lumps. Um, 
don't see any questions. Well, they aren't testing broadcast Queasy Oilner. Well, they aren't testing that. I know I called that they should tell me where monitor sites are. Canadian Radiation Bureau doesn't know the name anymore. Of course. Uh, lot, uh, what's 66 saying? 66, unboy 66. I got no idea. Yeah, they laid off a ton of fishery staff and they brought in the military, didn't they? With fisheries here in Canada. I'm trying to catch up, folks. Hang on. Hi, Laurie. Ready seems to have high readings all the time. It might be uh, Sharon Hardis leaking one, yeah. Uh, Nuber Magic got a great dorsal smoke. I get it. I'm stupid today. I was trying to make fun of it, but I, I wanted to figure it out first so I can actually, but what the hell. Unifor will change when the next major quake and typhoon. No, I mean, that's that's the fantasy that's going on right now. Is they're going to, no matter what happens, Unifor is okay. They're working on it. They'll keep showing us footage from Unifor every Unit 6, but we're not going to take it no more, right? We're not going to take that from them no more. We're tired of this. Uh, yeah, the Fukushima stats, I don't know. Lyrinarel says, sitting out here in 20 degrees smoking with the laptop. Everybody's smoking. <laughs> Try a uh, player's plane. It has uh, no chemicals. It has no chemicals. And because uh, and it has no filters, and you don't want filters on your cigarette because the filter makes the particulates smaller, and so they get rid of liners of your lungs, membranes of your lungs, and uh, they, that's where it really causes you grief, see? Eh? And so it super charges the the capacity of the four thousand chemicals now, because they're able to get rid of liners of your lungs. That's what makes them so. So you can still enjoy a cigarette. You just got to smoke cigarettes without. The four at the four thousand chemicals, and there is a few brands of cigarettes out there where you can actually enjoy them. Um, I got them. I got them there. I can't reach them. I thought I smoked very much, but uh, smoking is something that that is um, spiritual. But um, it, it, like everything, you can abuse it. You know. Uh, and then the 4,000 chemicals is a different world altogether. That's not smoking anymore. You're not smoking anymore. Your, your body is addicted to 4,000 chemicals, those trace chemicals. And they're only allowed to, they're only allowed to use those 4,000 chemicals in a cigarette uh, legally because they grandfathered in 65,000 chemicals, all the chemicals known to man in 1981 when the EPA hung their shing shingles out. See how that works? So because those 65,000 chemicals got grandfathered in no environmental or human impact studies, Bob's your uncle. And that's why they were able to use the Corex to chemtrail the BP, chemtrail the Gulf of Mexico with millions of gallons of Corex. And Corex is made up of the 65,000 legal chemicals that are totally hideous. That's a totally hideous thing to do. They know better. But hey, it's legal. And so there's no moral or ethic involved in it. There's a profit to be made. And the people that are doing it are assured that, oh, it's okay. EPA grandfathered them all in. So they're good. Of course they're not. Of course that's true. You know, these are murderers, these people that are doing that and won't. They have the technology to check all 65,000 of them out. See? And find out which ones are carcinogenic and which ones are not. And they just won't do it. They won't do anything. They're, they're the most useless thing imaginable. The main types of cancer are of the lungs charged with the addition of the filters. Well, you got 4,000 chemicals. And when yeah, when you use the filter, you're, you're making them smaller. And they get through the learner of your lung. And it's, it's that's why it's such an issue. But players playing cigarettes. I got them there. Hang on. Players playing. Come here. Huh. 
I don't know if you can see that. Uh, they got no filter. <coughs> uh, I suppose I'll have one. I'm not going to have one. I'll have a few puffs. I can't smoke a cigarette. I can only take a few puffs. I'm a wimp. I'm an old wimp, see? But uh, you can see there's no filter. You got to light this end. There's a little word there, so you got to light the one with the word. <laughs> it's a lot harder though without the filter, right? I remember the old days when the filters. I gotta have puff now. That's enough of that. <laughs> but you're not smoking 4,000 chemicals, and they've been doing peer review studies. I know I got away from everything. I'll come back to it. Whose puppies are smoking inside? <laughs> and you need to get your own channel. She does. Hi, Max. Hi, Michelle. Pack a day, they say. People who don't smoke are inhaling enough rads to compare with two packs a day. I mean, that's one way of putting it. Uh, one isotope is enough to kill you. And if they cremate you, you liberate the isotope and it'll float around and find something else to kill. Uh, is the problem, right? So, you remember how I told you about if you took a drop out of the ocean and you put it, um, you put it on a slider under a microscope, you see millions of creatures in that little drop out of the ocean. Anywhere in the ocean, doesn't matter. Millions of creatures. Just a little tiny drop on a piece of glass under a microscope and there they are. You can spend all day looking through the millions of creatures. Now, if you took a fish tank, a 1,000-gallon fish tank, 2,000, 5,000-gallon fish tank out of the ocean, and you took that same isotope and you put it under, uh, took an isotope and put it in that tank, it will kill all of those creatures, those trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of creatures in no time at all. Because that isotope is just creating radiation. It's just constantly pumping out this radiation. And, and a beck wall... It can flip over a grain of sand, for instance, worth of energy. Think of that as how much energy it's actually tossing out, what kind of force it's using. So shooting out this energy, right? Does that make sense for folks now that are not familiar? Smokers lounge and chat. Yeah, that's funny. Nuber Magic is... Uh, he's got to go outdoors and smoke, so I'm going to light it up and just fuck him over. Oof. Um, filter list was camels, Annabeck says. Yeah, no bro magic got us tired about smoking. Thanks, man. I was dying for one. Look, I just lit that back up. <laughs> so that stuff is a player's plane and hasn't doesn't have four thousand chemicals and has no filter, and it makes you spit. <laughs> How can that be a bad thing? <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> yeah, but my cigarettes don't have 4,000 chemicals. <coughs> tore the heart out of me. <coughs> okay, look. A lot of people want to, has contacted me now in the last three or four weeks or whatever wants to donate I <laughs> don't want donations thank you though that is so cool of you but I was thinking about it go put an ad in the local newspaper and so now you know what you've done with your money you donated it to me by putting an ad in the local newspaper and you can send them to Miss Melky or send them to New Girl Magic or send them to uh, Kevin Blanche or send them over to a beautiful girl by Dana or you know what I'm saying you send right you put an ad in the paper and you say for Fukushima updates go to so-and-so, right? That's brilliant. And not only that, you force the newspaper now to look into it, right? Because everybody in the community, you know how little communities are? <laughs> what the hell is this? There's a new link on our newspaper. Honey, get the old computer out, dust it off. We got to go check it out. There's something new in the newspaper. And I think that actually might change something. I not think it might. I don't know it might. I know it would. Because if you lead them back to us, whoa. You know what they say, you can lead a horse to the well, but you can't make him drink. Um, 
But people are so friggin' bored with the lies from mainstream media, particularly about Fukushima, lying like that, saying it looks like that, when it actually looks like that. You could put them in a lot of problems. That would be the, like the best donation you ever made. And you know where your money went every single time. Walk in the newspaper and say, here, look, write it out on a piece of paper, how much money for me to put that in the paper for a week or a month or something or a year. And uh, that's an incredible donation, see? You find people out there that you want to promote. And then if the media won't let you put that in the paper, you make a big deal about it with a little video. You pop up a little video and you type up what you wanted and try to get a snap a picture of the place or whatever and stick it in the paper, call them out and send it to me. Send it to me, right? And tell me they didn't, they wouldn't let you run it in the paper. And I'll f give me the name of them and I'll ream them out for you for like an hour. And say, you can do a lot of ads for $15. Well, most people want donations. You know, they, people donate 30, 40, 100 bucks, 5,000 bucks or something. But for just $15, just $15, you not only screw over everybody in that, Newsroom, because they're they have to think about it now, because that that ad's not going to go away for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think so. There's a lot of curious people out there. There we go. We'll do that every night, right? Because there's lots of people out there pushing back, and you can support them by taking a simple ad note out in any paper, any newspaper. There's all kinds of free papers you can do it too if you get you get going. But you can even make flyers and put it around town. And you don't know, see? Who, who's going to click with it, right? Go to Miss Milky the Clown 1 on YouTube for Fukushima updates. Go to Beautiful Girl by Dana. Laugh for a while. Be abused. Be amused. Um, and go to Uber Magic. Check out the tattoos. Right? And Common Sense. Uh... They can't reject those ads, I don't think. So yeah, we can get free ads and send people to our sites. I like it. I like it. It's got Quagmire. It's got something. Hi, Query. Hi, Michelle. Yeah, I hear you, Michelle. You say, well, there's three melted reactors. They're three times the size of Fukushima. Are three times the size of Chernobyl, and Chernobyl was a 30%, and these are 100% meltdowns. Uh, I know it's it's hard to talk to people, and but the more you mention it to them, the more likely what you tell people is say, go ahead and debunk it, right? Go ahead and debunk it, or pick up your smartphone and open up E and E News and read the headlines, and do that to them every day you see them. Say, oh look at that, you know, don't be. Too blunt with it, but try to make some fun out of it. Say, look at that, gee, they got another one out of there. Do that each day for a week and you'll get theirs. Right, you can put ads everywhere. Um, and the ads just, it intrigues people. Say, learn about Fukushima for it kills you. <laughs> ask your government why Fukushima is not number one. Ask this media why they don't talk about Fukushima. Thrift papers. Yeah, there you go for Rad Chick. Miss Milky makes a business card for Rad Chick. That's brilliant. It's excellent. Free rad testing clinics. <laughs> Is this live? Yeah, if the comments are alongside the video, we're actually live streaming. Um, but there will be glitches, especially when I'm changing pictures. That tendency to be glitches. Yeah, nobody knows nothing about Fukushima, so we got to come up, like I say, we we got some good stuff we can hammer people with, but when the media is out there showing people that, I mean, that doesn't look like anything to worry about, see? If they said it was inside of that, people would say, wait a second, honey, can you rewind that for me? Let me look at that again, because that don't look normal. Yeah, I'll think about that, Michelle. I'll think about that for you. And see if I can come up with an idea or a video, a short video or something. And 
That's an interesting. I have to think about that. How many times the size of Three Mile Island? Gee, I forget. I have to look that up. That's a good one. Yeah, we're high shift. Zakatakamoto shift. I almost said it right that time, I bet. Hi, Ketzer K. Uh, hey, Nubur Magic, what do you think is like the most pressing thing about Fukushima? What do you think is like we should really. You got any suggestions on what we should really force out there? You've been at this for a long time. Hi, Benny. Aviator abused, amused, yeah. Yeah, come see Dane and get abused and amused. I'm not too abusive, am I? I'm pretty bad, actually, I know. Stop skiing if it's live. Am I skiing my feet? I'm rocking a bit, yeah. That's because I got me muck locks on and it's freezing. And I keep jamming my toes up into the top. Because they're frozen. I, did, I want. I turn the heat off so I don't have that background noise. I'm gonna probably gonna have to leave it on. I just passing through. I'm just trying to keep up with comments tonight, folks. That's all I'm really doing. Moments, nothing more. You're just watching in silence. Yeah, Nubra Magic, Miss Milky's uh, videos. You know, they got the remix button turned on that. So you just go and click the remix button if you're really lazy and it'll just show up on your site later. Can't get any simpler than that. Once you do it once, like a bicycle, you learn to do it all the time, right? And, uh, you know, the more you force out those headlines, the more they generate awareness. And then the people that are subscribed to you or you got you got these videos on your site that you want to show family, you don't have to go anywhere, and they can say, oh, you really, you're on the ball, you scooped it all up already. Uh, yeah, it's one of those nights where I'm just, blah. I didn't think I was going to make it on. It's just one of those days. But I realize, you know, that, especially looking at building four this evening, and all, well, all, since five o'clock this morning till about two o'clock this afternoon, I, it was nonstop looking at, old stuff about Fukushima, looking at all the buildings, um, trying to find footage with different search terms. And I was I got a big collection today to do a video with. Uh, but I probably only got really 120 of what I need. I'm going to do a movie, I guess is the best way to put it. And I'm going to just chronologically tell the Fukushima story the way it should be told and that'll make sense, and that nobody can pick holes in uh, and tear, the, tear them all apart at the same time. Hi, Zifri. Hi, Zoe. Uh, somebody said Mr. Dana. Hang on, I missed it all. Zoe. Come over see Dana. You're not going out, it's too cold. I'm sorry. She's been... Somebody said something about somebody else doing it in their own time zone, yeah. I thought about that. Zip free, Mr. Any issue with someone from the UK doing a similar sort of thing on your time zone? I'm not sure what, what you mean by that, but yeah, go. I got no idea what you mean. Um, the danger is hitting the coast now, right. Zoe! No. Come on, Missy Dana. Hey, hey. Go lay down. She's over by the door. She wants to go. Out. She smells something out there. The biggest danger at the moment. Hi, Mr. Easley. Easily. Easily? I'll get it. Yeah, there's no life here tonight, folks. We'll, we're just chatting. That's literally what we're doing tonight. <coughs> I'll run down the anybody new that's just joining us. This is the pictures that mainstream media is propagating 
to you and your loved ones and your friends, your relatives and the people you work with. And this is what it actually looks like. And so when they show uh, this to your friends and you're trying to explain to them that it really looks like that and that it's impossible to look like that on the inside because it really truly does look like that where all the panels are blown, the building is wide open and you can't get in there because it's full of hundreds of thousands of tons and rods that even a piece this size will kill everybody in your lunchroom. A piece this big. And so there was no way for them to get inside of that building. And by putting shelters, these Kevlar tarps over them, you, you're trapping all these noble gases inside and uh, that, that, that's an execution chamber to walk in there. You will never walk out. Nobody can retrieve your body because it's so toxic in there. And even if they did retrieve your body, they can't take it off the nuclear waste site because it's nuclear waste. And there's a lot of those victims on that site right now. They cut me here. Benny, did you have that pulse spot before? 3-11-11? I did, yeah. I did. That's from years on the ocean. That's from years of wearing a dry suit and a helmet and all the equipment. Scrubbing your head, soaking wet all day in the ocean. Hi, uh, low God, man, 77. Yeah, the news pictures are just, they want to move to the moon. Thank you. There you go. And so they're like, it's just endless news now coming about taking over the moon. It's just endless in the last, uh, say, five days. Yeah, Japan's going to put 6,000 or 600 kilometers of solar arrays up there. Americans going to grow food. China's going to put up uh, laser installations up there. Uh, and other countries recently have been uh, talking about going to the moon to do things. Now, everybody's focusing on the moon at the one time is very interesting. Because you can't get away from what's coming. You can't get away from what happened to the Philippines. And I'm not even going to go down that road tonight. We just spent the last half an hour just kind of chatting back and forth with people. And so I'm just not going to... I'm not going to switch at this point in time. I'm already up here 50 minutes. I'm just going to finish off the last few minutes chatting with people. Hello. Uh, uh, but if you got any questions, I'll be sure to give it to you. I'm just coming down looking for a spot. Let me see. The biggest danger at the moment. And there you go. I got kicked that time. That's okay. There's no way I should lose my stream, though, see? I have such a big bandwidth, I shouldn't lose my stream. I'm only using a little tiny stream for my stream, and there's tons of my bandwidth left over. As maybe Zoe got to take a number two. Well, it's another 10 minutes. It should be okay. Hi, Miss Milky. <laughs> okay, we'll end it on Miss Milky. Michelle Capper says, Dana, why don't you do a Google Plus hangout with Nubaru and others? Yeah, I was thinking about that today. I can't get access to Google Plus. I'll try a... There's, there's something going on with my system, see? that That's an issue. I can't... And the only way I can leave a comment is I have to open up another window, then type out what I'm going to type, then copy that, then paste that. That's how I done it last night. That was how I got away with it. And then hit... And, but if there's something that needs to be adjusted, I try to correct it while it's actually in my comment section. I'll get all this... Blah, 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 blah. And I went through all of that. I, I, I kept signing up to Google like they asked me to do, and I kept trying to sync up. And I can't. It's crazy. It's it's torturous. And but I am in a very, uh, very soon going to work this out, and uh, that's going to delay me by a day or two because I'm going to have to redo everything. I'm going to have to gut everything I got, and just start from scratch, and get it up and running, and then work the kinks out of it. So I'll have to come out with another one of those twenty video days. Two days, three days of just video after video after video after video to get the kinks out of it and then invite people in 
and live stream it and then I can even bring you right up here to YouTube that I can do all I'm gonna do all of that at the one time I'll get the Google Plus at the same time anybody can pick off a of global Google Plus once I work it out I'll be able to also have here with the live stream and so I should be able to invite like five people into the stream and I would love that you have no idea I would I have no issues with that um, but separately they can do that if they want with me if anybody wants to contact me and do a Google Plus right so what you do is you open up your, your YouTube account and it'll say do you want to upload a video and to the right you'll see um, uh, stream video or upload or Google Plus video and if you click that it'll take you over to your Google Plus play page and then you could um, uh, you can invite me into that and so that would that would show up on YouTube right after we finished that conversation right so even that will be better than nothing I agree and so Miss Milky got the last one folks I'll come in and read the comments after and I'm gonna start taking screen captures I decided while I'm doing this each night and then put that in the folder each day and then at night time I can answer those questions too when things are a bit slow catch up to the questions that have already been asked and Lorena Rell has asked so many great questions I owe that anyway see so let's talk about diving for five minutes and we'll call it a night I'll come down and say hi to everybody 56 minutes okay I'll just get <coughs> So Nubu Magic got the same problems. I don't know what kind of what kind of diving story can I tell? I wonder. There's so many. Let me let me think for a second. There's always something fun to tell. Oh yeah. Do I tell a scary story? Do I tell a funny story? Do I still tell a um, average story? Let me see. One, two, three. I can't come up with anything off the top of my head. Let's just pick a random random word out of this you know I was uh, I went diving uh, on the east coast uh, I dove boat oceans extensively there's probably 10 ports in Canada I start off with that there's probably 10 ports in Canada I've never uh, tied up in and in my downtime I would go out and wreck dive and I have dove on around 400 wrecks I dove on a, a ship in Newfoundland uh, that had, uh, I think it was around 1,500 people died on it during the Second World War. And it was down at 200 feet, uh, 200 feet. And I hadn't been diving much that week, so I was good to go because you have residual nitrogen in your body. So you got to watch out. Uh, your deepest dive of the day has to be your first day dive of the day and then the rest of your dives are basically decompressions if you're doing more dive and you go shallower each time in other words right okay so anyway uh, I decided I wanted to go dive on the wreck and it was a lot harder than what I expected it was down you were able to penetrate the wreck at about 210 feet and so um, I took an extra tank and the plan was just to go down, and I was using the old Jack Cousteau tables. So you go down 200 feet, not 210, but you go down 200 feet <laughs> for 10 minutes. And so when I got down to the wreck, actually the wreck was at 195 or whatever it was, and it was full of um, Draeger, like heavy mesh, and it was full of hooks. And so anyway, uh, I decided I was going to try to cut a hole in it and then come back another day and try to penetrate the wreck. And so you can't really do a lot in a few minutes. And so um, I came back anyway. I cut quite a bit out and I came back another time. I cut, I cut another bunch of chunks out of this area that I can see something down inside of it. And then we had this bad weather where I didn't get in the ocean for a while and the wind shifted and moved all the ice quite a ways away. And so I, I went down 
with the intentions of this time actually just peeling back what I had done and I was going to tie it on. I took some rope with me and I was just going to tie it on there, like colored rope on the edge so I can see it when I penetrated the wreck. And so I went down in the wreck and I couldn't find my way out, uh, which was pretty stupid. But that's the way I was. And so I can't remember uh, exactly uh, what you know what what I was thinking at that time, but uh, I seen a, a couple of skulls, and somehow or another I equated that with something I had seen a dive before that, like a flash when I was cutting away, and I had seen something glint down there, and so I looked I looked in this one angle, and you can see all the dirt, the sediment that I kicked up, was flowing up through, and so I realized. Not flowing up through, but but yeah, it was kind of like that where we, I could see it moving, and so I went in that direction, and it took me out of the hole. <laughs> it's just pure luck I got out of that. Just pure luck. She never went inside of it. I had no fear though, right? That was my biggest. I had fear. I had respect. I mean, I dumped my weight belts three hundred times for sea lions, because they would rush me, and at the last second they would turn. And you know how you get a a, a, a a bar of soap in your bathtub, and you go like this over the bar of soap, and then wait for 1,001, 1,002, and then the bar of soap moves. Well, when that big 2,000-pound sea lion is coming at you, it's a very intimidating thing. And underwater, everything looks 25% bigger. And so, this, But then it won't hurt you. But you can't, it's so hard to, con it's like being rushed by a lion, because they're really aggressive. What they want you to do is go away. That's all they want you to do. Because the sea lions, We'll have 100 or 150 women up on the rock, and they're out there to, to dominance, right? And once you go away, they'll go back up on the rock. Uh, and I understand all that psychologically, but psychologically, I still could not uh, handle it when they do that to you. They would rush you, and blowing bubbles is a sign of aggression. So you see the sea lion, you're going, brrr, brrr, right? and the sea lion, brrr, and he's blowing in bubbles too. And then he runs up and gets here and comes back down. He's really pissed off now. Because that's how they do it. Whoever runs it here first got to go up to the ceiling and give it up. But he's not going to give up all the women to something that looks like a, like a crab, you know, down there. I can barely move in relationships. And if you grab me like that, you can pull me off, off balance, right? And tip me right over. And it takes me 45 seconds or something to get back up and to pick up all of my equipment after I'm, that happens to you. Because he can send you 15 or 20 feet across all the sea urchins and everything else. And I punched a lot of holes in my gear and had to come up. And uh, we used to always call, carry the suture kits. Because I used to do long trips, 60 to 100 days on the ocean when they were coming ashore. And I used to run the fleets. Uh, and I'd do my six hours a day on the ocean floor. That's two marathons a day, every day on a human body. And so I would take the sutures out, give myself a local anesthetic, and dig it out myself, and dig it at other people. We had, uh, this is a pretty bad story, I'll tell it anyway. But we had this kid out there, and he fell face down on a bag of sea urchins. And his whole face was swollen out, and it was really bad weather. And so I'd done surgery for a couple of hours on that kid's face. Today I still wonder how he made out. But the, the ear vacuumed him out after but I took as much out of his face because worried I was going to kill him before the helicopter can get out. And I got so many of those stories. I don't know why I keep going down that road, but I got so many of those stories. Uh, it's such a dangerous, it was such a dangerous world. I had surgery on my hands five times from spines that I went, one spine went right through here, right through the bone and out the other side. And so the surgeon, they can only do surgery on both sides, but they can't get it out of your bone. <laughs> And so even the day when I leaned down on that bone, it's like hell. Uh, I know that got nothing to do with Fukushima, but because it was one of those nights where there was just blah, it was okay to tell a fun little, uh, very true, couple of very true stories. Yeah, and I could keep going. Uh, yeah, I was saved by a skeleton, yeah, from uh, the Second World War. How bizarre. And I never went back. <laughs> It was a hellish spot anyway, but, uh, and originally I didn't even know if it was deer for sure. I didn't believe the people that were telling me, but it was, so, and I found out after, of course, uh, 
It was sunk in the Second World War, 1,500 people almost aboard of it. So we say hi and goodbye to everybody. Annabeck, eat, drink, and surf, for tomorrow we die. And I got a lot of headlines I grabbed a day of people, like two kids in one school had heart attacks on the same day in school in Japan. Police officers that have died of radiation poison uh, from Fukushima, quite a few. There was a teacher and a student died on the same day uh, from that poisoning. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun story, folks, yeah. One of these days I'll go right down for like a whole hour like I do with my friends, and I've done it many times, but I never tell the same story twice. Yeah, maybe so, Miss Milky. It's kind of nice to reflect on it. I don't have to always tell stories about me either, see, because I ran the fleets, and so every night we would all sit around and tell the stories of... Uh, some, stories, some stories I can't tell, I guess, because I don't want to tell, but... I don't like thinking about it, uh, but I'm older now, time's gone by, and it doesn't quite affect me. Still does, um, but it, you know, when you put a big enough carrot in front of people, like for me it was $29 a minute, that's a big carrot, it's a very big carrot, and that donkey will go, and he will go until he's broken. I'm far from broken. I'm ready to do some breaking is what I'm ready to do. And uh, we'll come back tomorrow night. And tomorrow night we're going to do a, a big bang up on Unifor again. I'm going to grab a whole bunch of more pictures. And we'll try to go for like a half an hour about why Unifor. I'm bringing that swimming pool picture. I got some more stuff about that today. How they faked it on the mainstream media. I used that picture. And then they spliced in... A picture of somebody stood up and it looks like they're stood up alongside the pool in uniform but I stopped it I downloaded it, stopped it slowed it down and you can see it's two completely different places pretty slick and it's only for like a second and a half but it gave me the illusion that somebody was in that pool I said well that's different because that looked like a person walking around that pool but after a four or five ex so yeah tomorrow we'll dig down that road once again folks we'll catch you tomorrow night take care